What's up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with another sports topic, and today we're going to talk some football. Houston, Texas football. We're going to talk about some roster moves because the Houston, Texans have activated and put running back Deontay Foreman off the pup list and have activated him onto the 53 man roster. And what does this mean for the Houston, Texans going forward? And what this means, in my personal opinion, it means that welcome to the conversation. Welcome to finally doing something that our, us fans have been wanting this franchise to do for years. And it's starting to finally do it. And that's play championship level football on and off the field. What I mean by off the field is that you're finally seeing roster moves to contribute towards a playoff run. Towards a championship run. Making those type of hard tough decisions. Because many times as being Texan fans we sit there in years prior and the team sit on their hands and just let the chips fall away. Injuries happen and no matter we're just going to stand pat, sit on our hands and just let us do what we do. Now this team with the whole DT tray after Fuller goes down. Now activating the formula on this public because that helps you with short yard situation. I know Lamar Miller has been killing it lately. I know he's with third in the AFC in Russia and more than likely he's going to be a pro bowl the way it is, especially with Cream Hunt being cut. And more than likely not going to play again this year because I don't think anybody's going to pick him up, at least this season. So he's going to be a pro bowl caliber running back this year. Top, more than likely top five in Russia when the season ends. I understand that. But it's a difference of running the ball against bad rush defenses and breaking off 97-yard runs and 70-yard runs here, 30-yard runs there, and you boost up your average and have good games. But run the ball when you need to. Short yardage. Second and two. Third and one. Fourth and one. Goal line situation. Something that we've been struggling all year is goal line. Red zone. Dante Foreman helps with that. He helps with short yardage. Hey, even though I have my questions about him coming back off the Achilles and how healthy he's going to be, how long it's going to take him to get fully healthy, but at least he's helping you, he can help you with that short yardage situation. And also, when you put him back there, you don't know if he, if you, you don't know if you're going to run or pass because he looks like he's a run there, but he was more effective last year in the passing game than he was in the running game. And because he's a big bruising back, you know, you put up, well, as far as his body type, he looks like he's a big bruising back. He's more explosive than the other guys. You put him in the backfield, they like, oh, yeah, he about to run the football. They come in for run, little, little, uh, little swing pass, bam. He gets you for, no, you on 31, he, bam, he gets you for a seven-yard gasher because they was all expecting the gaps up the run the gap up the middle, and you do a swing pass, a little screen. You got your seven yards out of it. Things like that. The mismanagement that you can do against the defense when you add this type of player to your roster again. And what I mean, like, I know a lot of people didn't like Rick Smith. I know a lot of people don't like Rick Smith. Like I said, my issue with Rick Smith was he was so-so as, as a general manager. He made a lot of good decisions. He made a lot of bad decisions. Outside of Kevin Johnson, every first-round pick he's, he's he has drafted either has made the Pro Bowl or played at a Pro Bowl caliber level. And it looked like Kareem Jackson might make the Pro Bowl this year, should make the Pro Bowl. But it's also saying that Kevin Johnson is a complete bust. So, every first round pick he's made, he's made. Now, his, his third round picks have been, mm. All his later round picks, mm. But he also made good off, um, you know, off season issues. My only issue with Rick Smith was allowing AJ Bouye to walk. Now, I know a lot of people are, whoo, I'm glad we lost AJ Bouye because, whoo, you see what happened to him on uh, Thursday night against the Titans? Be real. Derrick Henry is a 250-pound back with 6'3", 250. Come on, I don't care if that was Deion Sanders. He was going to get face masks like I mean, he was going to get big face like that. Let's be real. And, and be honest with yourself. Name one corner on this roster right now that's better than A.J. Bouye. I'll wait. Corner, not safety. Corner. Better than A.J. Bouye. Nah. A.J. Bouye already made the Pro Bowl last year. I think he was all pro last year. Yeah, he was. He was all pro last year. Second team all pro. Come on, now. Come on. I know Jackson's defense has struggled a lot this year, but A.J. still better than the corner we got on this roster. That was my only issue with Rick Smith. And like I said, I had questions about Brian Gaines, but I got to give credit where credit due. Now, I don't know 100% who decision 
the uh, activating Deontay Foreman, if it was Bill O'Brien, or if it was Brian Gaines, in my personal opinion, I think it's a little bit of both. I think they came to an agreement. I don't know if it was more on one side or the other. It could be. And they might have even said, and I just missed the news. But my personal opinion, I think it was 50 50. And like I said, I got to give credit with credit. Like I said, the whole, only credit I really gave him coming into the season was the contract that he's able to afford, Honey Badger. But finding, even though he failed to you, but you going ahead and drafting Justin Reed, who I think. It should be at least in the conversation. I know he's probably not going to win it because you got the, the linebacker at da uh, Dallas. And you, you got some other guys who are probably going to end up winning defensive rookie of the year. He should definitely be in the conversation. I think he's going to be an all-pro safety of his career. And safety help is completely, completely, completely important. Think about safeties in years past. Think about defenses in years past. They all had good safeties. The Ravens had Ed Reed. The, um... Steelers had Troy Palmahu. Think about this. Paid man, on time, like paid man, on time, paid man won Super Bowl with Indy. Colts always had bad defense. Safety Bob Sanders come in, they <laughs> win the Super Bowl. Safety help uh, that that play against Cleveland shows you why you need safety help. When Galloway gets all the way down to the one yard line, he gets stripped. That shows you how important safeties are. So I give you that. That was a great decision, and he might find the, or a cornerstone safety. For a great defense or future good defense, championship level defense. That's championship level football right there. Off the field. Finding safety. Something that Rick Smith never did. Rick Smith never found that level playmaker at safety. I mean, he found guys who were serviceable. But, I mean, Glover Quinn. I like Glover Quinn, but he wasn't. I don't think he was a game changer at safety. I have a feeling that Justin Reed could be a game changing guy. He already has. Pick six. That fumbled the uh, cause that thing about it, if Cleveland scores right there, it's plenty of time. The game can start getting back close again. That's a game changing play, game momentum play. Same thing with Reds can score a touchdown, get a field goal, they up. Pick six. That's the difference of the game. Game changing plays. That's something that Justin Reed provides you. I like that. I really like the tight end Jordan Thomas. Jordan Nakers in the past couple games he showed me a little bit something, but I really do like Jordan Thomas. I really like John Tom. Now, ranking, we will see about them. Kiki, you know me, I'm a Tech Tech fan. Wreck him. But on the feet, when he on the field, he legit. This hamstring injury, like he has, he didn't have hamstring issues in college. So maybe this is an aberration this year. Hopefully going forward it's better. But then you make the trade for DT when Will when Will Fuller goes down. You like, no, we are at this point that we can win, we can get to the playoffs. And we can make noise in the playoffs. We can't just run out there and try out there DeAndre Hop. No, we because years pass. Be real with yourself. That's what you do in the past. That's what that's what Texan teams have done in the past. Anything Andre never had a running man. It took it took them years to get hot for Andre. No, Fuller goes down. We are gonna find somebody. We are gonna find somebody. I know we prefer uh, Deshaun Jackson because he actually fits what Will Fuller can do. As far as stretch the field, but you bring in somebody who's also now he's a big body red zone target. Nothing kill two birds with stone. You have another reliable receiver who's won a Super Bowl, who's been a number one receiver before, and then also you get you get a guy who's a big body guy who helps you with your red zone issues, which you have. Then you got hop with all the good catches. Then you got a big body tight end. You got two big body tight ends. Now you got a big body receiver. Now you bringing in a big body running back again, help with short yardage. In red zone and run the ball when you need to run the ball when you need to drain and soak up the clock. Things of that nature. Those are things that you got to do. Those are things that you got to do. And I'm actually happy that the Texans have made that type of move years past. Like like I said, years past. Lamar Miller's doing a good. Uh, Lamar Miller's out there eating it. Alpha Blue's having a solid year as, as his backup running mate. We just want to save our roster spots. We're not going to activate Deontay for me. Two, three years ago, that's exactly what happens. But no, this year they're like, we have a shot. We don't want to foul this up. We're going to get it done right now. We're going to give Deshaun and this, and this team all the weapons we can offensively and defensively to make a run to get it done right now. You don't want to be Jacksonville and look at like, damn, our best out window opportunity was this year. We fucked it up. We brought Blake Boyles back. Damn. We drafted Leonard Fournette over Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, 40 touchdowns in 13 games. 
Deshaun, rookie year, 19 touchdowns in seven games, six games. Come back this next year, he's still killing it. Both of them look way better than Blake Boys ever looked. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. And I, I'm, that I got to give credit where credit is due on that front. But in saying that, something that Bill O'Brien's been saying for the past couple of weeks, don't take the cheese. Now, us as fans, we can be happy. And if you're not happy about a nine-game winning streak, there's no point of you being a fan of a football team or a sports team. If you can't be happy when your team is winning nine games. But don't get overly confident like Bill O'Brien say. You're like, enjoy the nine games. Enjoy the, the winning streak. But do not take the cheese because this league has a way of humbling you. I said it last week. All what Baker Mayfield was say, saying, I knew. All off the, all the stuff he was off the field, Baker Mayfield going to have a rude awakening come Sunday. I thought we were going to beat them up as far as sacks, but we beat them up as far as forcing them to make turnovers. Three, three picks, one was a pick six. This league has a way of humbling you when you not cookie cutter quarterback, a cookie cutter quarterback. league has a way of humbling you. When you start... Taking the cheese, drinking the Kool-Aid. This league has a way of humbling you. Case in point, the team that we could play tomorrow. The Colts were one and five. End up going six and five. Five game winning streak. Now remember, we've won seven, eight, nine games in a row. Last time I checked, nine is more than five, correct? Everybody, when you talk about the Texans, up until they beat the Titans on Monday night, and only and only former players like Chris Carter, uh, Shannon Sharp, and it was a, uh, no Booker uh, 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 Booker McFarlane on Monday night, it, it, a couple other guys, only former players, Eric Mangini, former players and coaches said this. They start feeding into the Texans, saying once you start winning this many games, you can't poo-poo it. Analysts. They still poo-poo it. They ain't won against nobody. They ain't even beat nobody. But, oh, but the Colts win five games in a row. They Super Bowl, con they Super Bowl contenders. Uh, they coming for the South. They come, they, they coming for the South. Andrew Luck, comeback player of the year. Andrew Luck needs to be in the MVP conversation. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is dipping. Uh, Drew Brees, the loss of the Cowboys. The Colts, the Colts, the Colts, the Colts. Andrew Luck, Andrew Luck, Andrew Luck. And they go out. And put a goose egg and get beat by Jacksonville six to nothing. You hold Jacksonville to six points. If anybody told you Jacksonville scored six points, oh, they got beat 30 to six. No, they won six to nothing. Cause you took it to the cheese. You fed into that. They start believing what they was. And you, and if I look at their schedule, the teams that they beat in this five game winning streak, the Raiders, the Dolphins. The Raiders, the Dolphins, the Jags, the Titans, and the Bills. Those are their five wins. Outside of the Titans, what team in their winning streak is better than any team that we played? Because at that time, the Titans were uh, um, the Titans were over five hundred when they beat them. That was the only one. The Raiders only won what two games? We beat the Dolphins. They beat the Dolphins. We beat the Dolphins. They beat the Jags, we beat the Jags. They beat the Bills, we beat the Bills. Now, of course, yeah, we did beat them. They beat the Bills more than we did. Like, they, they had, I think, 30 points against the Bills. But we beat the same team. We beat the Titans, they beat the Titans. We beat the Bills, they beat the Bills. They beat the Dolphins, we beat the Dolphins. They beat Jacksonville, we beat Jacksonville. The only team they beat that we didn't play was the Raiders. But then we beat the Cowboys, we beat Denver, and we beat Washington in that stretch. And we beat them. But yet our winning streak of nine is not as precious as they winning streak of five. Because they took the cheese. And I'm glad they're not. I'm glad our winning streak is not precious. And it's good. Because I don't want nobody on that team to feed into taking that cheese and be, get humble. I don't need you to get humble. But the Colts did. Now the Colts are gonna come here hungry because they're humble. And this game here is a t-shirt and hat game, t-shirt and jacket game. Hey, you win the, you you win this game, AFC South champion hats. It's official. It's clinched. They put the X or the Y, whatever whatever the little clinch logo they have when you clinch and win the division. That goes beside your name anytime they show your name on Sunday night football on Monday night football when they talk about divisional races and playoff seasons. You would officially have it clinched if you beat 
the Colts tomorrow. That is what is on the line. Not only do you clinch the division, you also clinch Bill O'Brien. You clinch one of having a winning record this year because you already won nine games. But you clinch Bill O'Brien having a winning record as a head coach. Because right now, he has 40 wins, 36 losses. You lose out, you end up 9-7. and seven. If you end up 9-7, and seven, and that's the only way you don't make the playoffs, you have, to, you have to lose out not to make the playoffs. So, like I've been saying before, I'm not an advocate of Fire Bill, Bill O'Brien. I haven't never been, I've never been an advocate of Fire Bill O'Brien. But if you foul this up, if you fuck this up, and you go from 0 3 to 9 and 3, putting a stranglehold on the division, like you this close, you can taste it. That the division is clinched, it's yours. And you foul that up and miss out on the playoffs. You know what your you know what your total record is? Because that means they'll go nine and seven. His record as a head coach is forty and forty. That's five years. And you're a five hundred court. You're a five hundred head coach. Five years in the league. You're a five hundred head coach. Five years and you're five hundred. And you gave up a chance. You let a playoff opportunity slip through your grasp. At that point, you are what you are. Five years is a long ass sample size. A long ass sample size to say we got to go in a different direction. It's, 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 it's a long ass sample size that we have to go in. The, we need to go in a different direction if you get to that point because what else could you do? You've had all the excuses the other years. Good defense, mediocre quarterback. In 14, 15, and 16, you know, you had. Uh, one year when you had uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick and Ryan Mal, then you had to go get Case Keenum out the tree. Then the next year, you had Brian Hoyer and Ryan Mal, then you had to go get TJ Yates from over here, and TJ Yates breaks his leg, and then you had to go get Brandon Wheaton, who's in Dallas, and only knew the uh, three plays of the playbook. He, was like, he said it was like learning Japanese backwards to win you some games and get you to the playoffs. Then 16, I swallowed. That's enough said. Last year, you had a quarterback, but your defense wasn't falling through. And then you lost your quarterback. So you had all those excuses. This year, you don't have those excuses. You got your defense. Your defense playing at a high level. You have your starting quarterback. You know he's the guy. He's playing at that level. Now you make it off season and off, off the field moves. Bringing in DT when you get an injury. Your injury happens, it's not stopping you. Bringing in DT. When your other player's coming back, hey, we're going to activate. We're going to cut somebody on the back end of the roster that we're really not using right now. Even though he's good on special teams. But we need to do everything we can to get our team these weapons to get to make this playoff push. You have no more excuses. So if you don't miss the, if you miss the playoffs, that means you go 9-7. It means you're a 500 head coach. There's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for that. Just just point blank period. There's no excuse for that. And not to mention, not only you have opportunity to win the division tomorrow, you also have opportunity to do things that this franchise, this city, has never seen before. Being a number, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think the, the Oilers, Houston Oilers ever were the number one seed, even the Lovey Blue Days. When they went to the AFC Championship game, I think they was playing at Pittsburgh. They weren't playing in Houston, so that more than likely Pittsburgh had the number one seed. You have an opportunity to get the number one seed, and actually, I actually messed up because I was I didn't realize exactly how much the tiebreakers were. But even if the Texans and the uh, Patriots, even though the Patriots have the tiebreaker, uh, uh, the Patriots have the tiebreaker over Houston. If the Patriots, the Texans, and the uh, um, Chargers all have the same record, say all three of them are thirteen and three, and the Chargers win the division, uh, win the, uh, the AFC West, it's a three-way tie. And the Texans have, I think, it's a strength of schedule. That they, they, like, the strength of schedule when it's a three-way tie like that, it goes off a of strength of schedule. And somehow the Texans' strength of schedule is stronger, uh, for lack of a better word. I'm, I'm assuming because I guess the Colts and the Titans, and that's the reason why I guess outside of the division race. You actually want to root for the Colts and Titans because that helps boost the up. That helps boost the up your uh, your strength of, uh, your strength of schedule because you play them twice a year. And like and they in Jacksonville, I mean not Jacksonville, but they got a team like Oakland in their division, and the Patriots got Buffalo and the Jets in their division. So their division is not as strong, even though 
they got two top heavy teams in the Chiefs and the Raiders. I mean, Chiefs and the Chargers, but they're one of those teams. There's not two of those teams. They're one, and they got Denver, but Denver's on your strength of schedule because you beat Denver. So because of the strength of schedule, you take the lead and have a better uh, strength of schedule, and you get the AFC South. So re what you really need is the Chargers to win the AFC West, and the Chiefs have a tough couple games because they one they got the Chargers still. They got the Raiders, uh, not the Raiders, but they have uh, the Ravens tomorrow. They got the Chargers after that on Thursday night. And then they got to go to Seattle on a Sunday night game. So the chances of the Chargers losing two, maybe three of those games is highly likely. And there's still a chance that the uh, Patriots lose to the Steelers. I still think the Patriots might lose to the Dolphins because they have a tough out when they're at Miami where they're at Sunday. So... I think it's gonna. I think it's a really good chance if you handle your business. If you handle your business, I think the Texans are gonna be a top two seed. I think at the very least, the Texans are gonna be the number two seed if they handle their business. And don't take the cheese that they handle their business. They'll be at the very least a top two seed. But they have a legitimate shot. I thought. I thought it was kind of out of the realm of possibility. But after I looked at some of the numbers, it's way stronger thought. A uh, way stronger chance than I thought originally. That they could be the number one seed. So you can't go from being the number one seed to not making the playoffs at all. And keep your head job. And I said, I'm not an advocate for firing them. But when stuff like that starts to happen, you got to take a hard, strong look of what you're doing. You do. You got to take a hard, strong look. And this game here, Sunday, it's a prime example. This is a prime example. This is the reason why this is what you do the drafting for. This is why you draft. This is why you draft a clowny, even though you got what. This is why really you draft a franchise quarterback to get you in these situations and to take you home. So can Bill O'Brien do the job? Can you do the job? Can the Texans complete what they're supposed to be doing? Can they do it? Can they continue to play championship level football on and off the field? Like, share, subscribe if you haven't commented below. If you haven't clicked that bell to get more videos, I'll holler.